Hello, this tutorial is going to show you how to create a very uh, easy uh, mentions map uh, from exporting data from DMIT CAT and opening it in Gephi and it will walk you uh, through the process. Uh, to complete this, you will need to have Gephi open and you will need to have open in a browser the capture uh, page of your DMIT CAT. If you do not recall how to get to this page, um, uh, you can go to your document where you stored the information when you set up DMIT CAT, and you will want to go to the analysis URL, and there's the username and the password, and that should bring you uh, right there. Uh, so when you uh, come back to DMIT CAT, choose uh, the uh, archive that you're going to be uh, mapping. Um, here, these are the Terence Crusher. Uh, hashtag tweets. Uh, choose a date range. You're not going to want to have the entire archive that's much too long, but choose a date range that you think makes sense. Uh, if you have a TV show that you're looking at, uh, more than one episode, several weeks would probably be enough. You'll notice that there are over 798,000 tweets uh, from 400,000 distinct users. Uh, that's a nice range. Uh, we're only going to be taking a very small sample of that. Um, so I could have even broken it down here, but uh, for some reason I, I went a little longer. Okay, uh, so once you've determined the date range and the hashtag uh, that you're going to be uh, grabbing, scroll down to the uh, networks section and you're going to be getting a social graph by mentions. And these are all uh, times when there is a mention within the tweet, including a uh, including retweets. So this does include the retweets. These are not direct in replies to. These are when a user is mentioned in the tweet. And this is good for finding hubs and communities and, and uh, looking for some patterns within there. Uh, so you're going to click Launch. And this little pop-up window will appear. And you want to choose a 1,000. That's a good number. Uh, this is the total top users you want to get. Um, if you entered zero at this point, we would have had 400,000 users, and that is much too big. Uh, so we want to get uh, 1,000 is a nice round number, and we'll be able to, to narrow down. Okay. Uh, when you do that, it will take a second uh, to save. Uh, while that is uh, creating the account, I'm sorry, the file, I'm just going to show you the Gephi area uh, over here uh, very quickly. Um, uh, there are three different sections um, of Gephi. There's the overview, which is where we do all of the creating of the network map. There is a data laboratory where you can go in and look at the actual uh, data, the numbers. Um, we're not going to be taking a look at that today. And then there's the preview area where you create your final image. Uh, this is the, the big graph area is where we're going to be seeing the graph take uh, manifest itself and, and take place. Uh, the appearance is where we adjust the node size and we determine what we want to highlight in the map. Uh, down here is the way, is where we choose which layout we want to use and there are a variety of different ones available to us. Uh, we're going to be using one for this tutorial. And here um, there are filters that we can apply to the data to reduce the number of nodes that we're looking at and statistics that we can uh, apply and we're going to be just running a couple of those. I should at this point thank Jen Goldbeck um, who has wonderful YouTube videos on how to use Gephi and uh, much of what I'm going to be showing you today is learned from her. Uh, let's go back to see if our file is ready. It is. Uh, so we can just right click on it and save link as. Uh, save it somewhere where you know it's going to be. Um, I'm going to Save it as number three, because this is the third time I'm using this one. And there it is, it's saved down there. Okay, now I'm going to go to Gephi, and I'm going to go to File, Open, and I'll choose the one uh, that I'm going to be using, which is right here, the one that I just opened. I create it, and then I click Open. Um, you are going to get this import report. Uh, there are no issues found during this import, which is nice because this is a mentions graph. We have a, it is a directed uh, graph because they're going from one person to another. We can see the number of nodes, a thousand, because we took the top thousand users 
and the number of edges, which means it's 3,826 connections among those 1,000 users. So that's a nice, uh, nice amount. We click OK, and we get a nice square uh, blob. It looks like the, the Borg from Star Trek. Um, so we really can't do anything with this. Uh, it is just a big square mass. Uh, we need to apply some uh, patterns to it. And uh, the first thing that we're going to do is to, to see uh, how this works is we're going to go to the layout area and we're going to scroll down to uh, Yi Fan Hu. And we'll click Run. And we'll see what happens. Oh, and we'll see, we see it exploding out like that. And what this is doing is it's starting to create relationships between different uh, uh, users. Here we have the different nodes. And you can see if you, if you move in, you can see all the different nodes are in here. Everything is sort of black and white and gray. Um, on the outside, in the outer rings, we see uh, nodes that are not really connected to anybody else. These are just, uh, you know, solo nodes, they don't really have many connections to the larger mass, and they're really not very interesting for what we need. We're much more interested in what's going on uh, down here, particularly in this little area over here and in some other places. So we want to filter out some of this data so that we can uh, begin to work with what we really want to work with. Uh, so what we do is we go to the filter section over on the right, and in the topo topology area we we, we click the little arrow carrot and we'll go and we'll find the giant component. And we take this giant component and we drag it down to where it says drag filter here. Okay. And once we do that, we click on that and we click on the bottom right hand corner filter. Now watch and see what happens in this area over here after I click filter. Okay. And that filtered out a considerable number of those nodes. And in fact, if we look in the right upper right hand corner, we can see that it's filtered down from 100% visible to 81% visible, right? And I can unfilter and then pre filter. Okay. Uh, there are now 99.29% visible um, edges and 810 or 81% visible uh, nodes. Now we want to filter this a little bit more by a degree range. So if we click this arrow, we can see a sub filter area. And if we take the degree range and we drag it down on top of that, or just below, we will then, uh, the, the queries will now have a degree range. So if we click on that, we'll see in the bottom right hand corner that there is a range of degrees that we have available to us. Uh, 0 to 118. Now 118 is the node or nodes that are connected to 118 other nodes. Um, so that is those users who have that range of 118 will be connected to the most nodes. Um, now that's that's nice to have if and uh, we'll, so we'll be able to see who's really at the center of these conversations that are going on with this hashtag. Um, to filter out a little bit more, uh, we take the degree range setting slider and we drag it to the right. Um, we can stop at five. Uh, that's sort of, these are uh, users who are connected to five other users. You could go, uh, and we can sort of zoom in here a little bit. Um, if you want to, you could go and say, okay, I want to do 48, but you can see that it's significantly reduced, right? And this is like the key people who are involved in this in this discussion. And if you wanted to check on who that is, actually, you can go in the bottom of the, the graph area, click on the T, and you can see uh, some of the usernames popping up. But it's a bit tight, so we don't want it to, you won't see that right now. Uh, we could run the UFON who again. Okay, it's not really doing much for us that way. Um, we need to spread things out a little bit. And to do that, we can change the optimal distance and the relative strength uh, between the nodes. It's sort of the forces that are being used. And we can say to change this to 500, and we can press Run. And we can see the main uh, people here uh, in this area. And um, we can see DeRay is here. And we can see um, Sean King. 
and some other some more uh, prominent uh, people. Uh, where is that? I saw Kaepernick. Yep, Kaepernick seven. The the 49ers uh, quarterback. We see the Tulsa police. So lots of um, interesting things that we're seeing uh, in here. Okay, uh, but 48 is really too 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 many. Uh, it gives us too few people. So we want to slide this back to you know maybe five. Let's say. And you can choose whichever you want for yours, depending on the size and, and what you've got. Five is a nice number here. I'm going to run this again. Whoa. And we can see everything just sort of burst out. And that's really, it's just cool watching that happen. Okay. Now we saw, we took a look at some of these samples in class. So you'll recognize this grouping right here based on what we talked about in class the other day. And you'll see some of the other things appearing that so will look, will look familiar to you. Um, so here we have a nice, you know, grouping. So after we've done the filters and we've uh, created the, we sort of got the map in a nice sort of starting place over here, we go over to our statistics and we want to run some statistics on this, um, on this so that the, the software can interpret it for us and help us generate uh, what we need to have generated. Uh, so we want to calculate the network diameter. So we just click run. And okay, and again, we want to make sure it's as the directed. Okay, and we see we have a network diameter of 14, and that's great. Average path is four users, and then we want to also click on the modularity. Now, modularity, we have some options on the resolutions. Uh, the, the lower the number, the more um, communities we're going to get. Uh, if you've got about it's good to start with number one and see what it gives you. You can always go lower than one or higher than one if there are too many. Uh, a good range is between like nine and nine and thirteen communities is a nice range. You get some nice color distribution. Um, so I click OK, and this one gives us a community of ten. So that's great. We we'll close that. Then we go over to partition nodes and. Uh, partition, we choose modularity class, and you can see it gives us a range of colors uh, right here. And this is what will then color our different communities, the modularity class or the different the relationships not between the different ones. Um, if there are a couple that don't have colors, uh, you can just click on it and it will bring up a nice little color map and you can choose which colors you want to use. I want to try to make sure they're unique, not the same as the others. I don't like them to be too dark because they overwhelm. And then once you do that, you can apply. And you can see that some of the, you know, the, the, the nodes and, and the edges have started to turn, have, have been assigned a different color based on their relationships to one another. Now, sometimes the colors are a little too light, like this one, number five. It's a little too light, so let's make it that. And this one's a little too gray for my taste, so I can change that to something like that. It's a little too pastel -y. right? Too close to the other ones. Okay, I'm still too close. You can play around with that all day long. Okay, um, so that is that. Now what we want to do is we want to click on this sort of the rings. This indicates that these are the node sizes. We can change the node size based on what we're looking at. And we click on ranking. And we want to choose, for our purposes for this tutorial, I want to show you the difference between in degree and out degree. So these are tweets um, where a user is mentioning another person or is being mentioned by another person. Um, so you can change the sizes. I like to have a nice distinct size uh, relationship. And so minimum size of the node is 10, maximum size of 100. I click apply, and you can see that the, the users who are being mentioned quite often are larger than the users who are not mentioning all that much. And you can see here that a lot of them are, are now overlapping one another. 
um, are on top of each other because the sizes have changed. So you can go back to the layout area and in the pull down menu click no overlap and click run and it will just sort of move things around um, and out of each other's way so we can see what's going on. And we see now that we have, um, we can tell who is at the center of this conversation, this one right here. These other people, um, people are mentioning this one quite a bit because it's in degrees, so the arrows are going in. So these are people who have been retweeted, for example, quite, quite often. Um, we can highlight who that person is and just that person. If you click on the little up arrow down the bottom over here, we can click on the T, which will give us all the usernames. But then under the Labels tab, click Hide Non-Selected. So that means only the one who is selected uh, shows up. Um, I, should, I should say that it is much easier to use the software when you do have a mouse because you can zoom in and out very easy. If you want to move around the entire, if you want to move everything around like that, uh, you right click down and you can and you can move it. And it's just much, much easier when you have that, that mouse. So we can always go and take a look and see who the, the other large ones. So DeRay has mentioned quite a bit, um, Kaepernick, and I don't know who a lot of these people are. Um, but again, as we talked about in class, you can then go and take a look and, and see what's going on. Here's Hillary Clinton being mentioned quite often um, in relation. Um, and we try to figure out, okay, why is Hillary Clinton in the same? Here's CNN, same color. Um, so we would go and try to figure all that out by taking, going back to the data. Okay. Um, so this is the in degree. And we can see Sean King is the uh, the one who's being mentioned quite often, or being most likely being retweeted quite a bit. Um, if we do the app degree, these are people who are um, tweeting mostly, most often. Uh, we can click apply, and you can see how that changes, right? I'll do it again. In degree, boop, and then out degree, boop, and you can see how this changes. Sean King has now been reduced down quite a bit, and other people are doing, the people who are doing the retweeting, consider a amount or talking about things quite a bit, are now much lar larger. And again, to avoid all this overlap, we can click, go to the overlap area and click run, and that will spread things out very nicely for us. And we can see that there are distinct communities that are sort of appearing. Uh, this again is the one that we mentioned in class the other day, talked about that grouping. Um, we can see this grouping is here. We would want to consider why this grouping. Uh, you will see in some of these that there are little arcs that are uh, go from itself to itself. This means that they mention themselves in a tweet. Either they retweeted themselves or um, they replied and their own username was in there. We can also see that there are arrows pointing, so we know the, what the direction of the arrows. Then we know what direction it is. Okay. Um, so now we, this is a nice this is a nice map. It might be a little crowded for some for some, but for our purposes, it's a it's a nice starting uh, a nice starting place. Um, once you're you're happy uh, with this layout, I strongly suggest you going and saving, going to file and save and you know put it somewhere where you will you be able to find it again i'll just throw it onto my desktop for now um, i had a bachelor archive in here at one point looks like um, documents and and here i would save it as parents Archer. And it will save it as a Gephi file. Now, when you do uh, this work, you want to take notes on exactly what you have done. You want to note down what the settings are for your you, you hunt who that you created. You know, you want to write down your degree ranges. You want to make sure you write down all this stuff so that you know exactly and assign in your notes assign it to a specific file name so that you know what you have. Uh, completed. So I'll save that.
And then I could open this again um, on this computer or another computer when I need to uh, work on it later on. Um, to create, uh, to get the, uh, to get a, uh, a map that we can now export, we'll go to the uh, preview area. And it will bring you here. It's blank. You just come and you click refresh. And here it will have the map for you. Um, and you can adjust the size uh, slightly like that. Okay. For some reason, I'm getting a rendering error right now uh, on this map. It was doing that before. Um, I'm not sure if that is a, it's just sort of a, the complexity of the map is giving it that error right here. I'm not sure if it will do that when it, keep that when it saves it or not. Um, but you can, if you don't like these curvy lines, you can uncurve them by unclicking over here and click refresh. And then it will show you the arrows, like where the, the direction of the conversations that are taking place. Uh, again, the thickness of the line indicates the, um, the number of and the size of the, of the connections between the two. I tend to like the curvy arrows. Uh, better. Uh, you can rescale the weight of the of the lines so that they're all the same. Um, and then, you, but I tend to like the the, the weight. Uh, you can even turn off the edges if you just want to see the nodes. So the constellation effect. I like to see them though. Uh, you can change the thickness if you want to, making it um, you know ten. You know, then you get some. <laughs> It's just like a, it's ridiculous. It doesn't really do anything for you. Um, refresh that and bring it back down. Uh, you can show the labels if you want to. And these are proportional, so the bigger, uh, the more often a, a username or a, the bigger the node is, the bigger the username is. Uh, that's a little annoying. Uh, but you can go and edit the size and the font, you know, whichever one you want, the typeface that you want to use. And you can choose a default size. So they're a little bit bigger. Click refresh. Not too much bigger, but there they are. Okay. And when, you've, when you're happy with what you've got um, and you're happy with, with the situation, you go down here and you click on the export to the bottom left hand corner. Click on export. And you can go and, you know, on TC. I think this was out degree. And I'll say 5 to 118 because that's the degree range that I had. And I want to save this as a PNG, uh, or you can say whatever you want, but for to be able to upload it to the website and stuff, you will save it as PNG and click save. Why this? Oh, because I changed the, the file type. Um, TC out degree. That's it. I can save it. I can tweet it. I can do it anything anything I want with it. If you're not happy with how this looks here, you can always go back to the overview and play around with the colors and change things. But that's a very quick way of creating an in-degree and an out-degree uh, mentions map uh, using DMI, uh, using Gephi from DMITCAD. Uh, good luck, and I look forward to seeing yours.